All right, welcome to another episode of Field Engineering. I'm your host, J.D. Brake. This is a real exciting uh, episode we have today. Um, on the show, we have our guest, Eric Kaiser. Eric, how are you? Good, J.D. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing well. Now, Eric, you've been on here before, but for people that are watching this video for the first time, where are you from and what do you do? I'm from here in Indianapolis, and uh, I work for a rep company, and we represent Solder Weld. Solder weld, that is what we are covering today, and you have a slew of tools and very cool stuff. I think we're going to burn stuff today, aren't we? We're going to light some stuff on fire. Yes, awesome. we are. Awesome. Now, as far as sol uh, solder weld, what is the most important thing you want our audience to walk away with uh, after this video is completed? Well, I want you to understand what we can do with solder weld products. Um, it is a uh, aluminum repair product is what we're going to be talking about first today. Okay. Um, and then we're going to get into doing some aluminum and copper joining as well mm -hmm. and showing some techniques for that and, and some uh, products for that. Why is this so important? Well, it's really important because in the past years, probably the past 10 years in the industry, we've seen a uh, surge of aluminum coils coming into the industry. And we're getting to the point now where we need to repair those coils, mm -hmm. um, not just replace them. And some customers don't want to wait for a, uh, a new coil to come in. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're not in stock at a distributor and we need to repair them or we just need to get them going again. Right. rather than having to replace a product. So that's what this product is all about today. So we're going to show how to repair a uh, leak in a fin pack uh, of a coil. Oh, okay. So we've got a hole in the, in the coil as well as we've got a rub out in U-bend uh, on the coil. So we're going to look at, uh, this is an evaporator coil we're working on today. Awesome. Well, let's get down to it. Kind of describe what we've got here. I'm assuming this is the coil we're talking about. This, absolutely, this is the coil we're talking about here. Uh, you can see a couple of other spots where uh, we've done some uh, repair practice. These are here. now they look like giant holes, but these have actually been prepared or uh, repaired. Correct. These are repairs. They are large holes in this. This doesn't go th all the way through the coil. Uh, mm -hmm. It does very slightly reduce the efficiency of the coil because you're going to limit the airflow through this spot, but. The alternative is it doesn't work at all. Yeah. So, you know, you can either have just a slight reduction in efficiency, maybe capacity. You're talking less than a percent with that. So gotcha. a lot of systems can handle that type of a of an issue. Uh, but what we've got over here, we've got a small hole punched in here. I uh, see that. With okay. an all. So we're going to talk about pulling those fins back. And then we also have a rub out. We took a file and we put a uh, rub uh -huh. out point on this U-bend out here. And uh, we will be able to uh, repair both of these spots. And then in the end, we're going to put some pressure on it and show that it's holding pressure. We'll put some uh, leaks. That's how we're going to test holes. that if you actually did fix it, that we're going to run a pressure test on there too. Absolutely. So how common is something like this uh, for the HVAC contractor to run into? Uh, it's becoming a lot more common in the industry today. We're seeing a lot more of uh, issues with aluminum coils, uh, getting hmm. rub outs, getting damage in them after things are running for a while. So. Uh, uh, it's surprisingly common today. What's the, what do you think the most common cause is? Is this wear and general wear and tear? Or? Ger physical wear, physical rubbing between two parts on a coil is yep. probably the most. Um, sometimes you'll get an electrical short to a coil, and it will actually physically blow a hole in the coil. Things oh, wow. like that. So okay. Um, well, let's fix this. All right, let's you're going to show us how to do it. All Sounds right. So good. what do we got here? Well, first we're going to start out with some safety gear. Okay? Oh, uh, I don't have safety goggles, so right. I'll use these. So, Highly intelligent bifocals to did shield you my eyes. Step into a uh, phone booth to put those. <laughs> yeah, on? exactly. It's like, <laughs> where did JD go? Who's okay. this guy? All right. So, so what do we have? What, what do you got in your hands the here? The first thing we want to do is we want to get these fins out of the way around this hole so that we can get into the tubing to make the repair. Okay. okay. So I use uh, either a pair of uh, diagonal cutters or this is a small pair of flush cutting diagonal cutters that I use. It's just nice because I can get out just enough fins right around the hole to be able to make the repair and not make the hole too large. Gotcha. Okay. So there we go. We've got an opening in. You can see the hole in there a little bit better yeah. now. Okay. So we just punctured that in there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use the alloy saw product. Okay. okay. So this is designed yep. for aluminum repair right there. Right. And that includes a flux. So you need to have both the rod and the flux to make this work properly. Okay. Now what does the flux do? The flux prepares the actual base metal okay. to bond to the rod. Okay. 
Okay, so we, the flux is what allows the two metals to bond. Gotcha. This metal, once it's placed on top of the base metal, is actually stronger than the base metal itself. Oh, all right. Okay, so the process, and this is going to get a little loud once I light this torch up. Okay. Okay, so just be ready. <laughs> the process is we're going to heat the rod up with the torch. Mm -hmm. Okay, the rod gets dipped into the uh, flux. Now, the yep. flux is actually a powder type flux. Right. So we're going to dip that in the flux. We're going to get a little bit on the rod, and then we're going to coat the area around the hole okay. with the flux. Okay. Gotcha. Once we get on to, once we get started to heat this up, because after we put the flux on, we're going to heat this up. All right, and you're going to watch the flux. And this is what the technician needs to do is watch the flux. As the flux warms up and when mm -hmm. it hits the melting point, this rod melts at about 600 degrees Fahrenheit. It's going to be it, hot. It's, but it's well <laughs> below the melting point of the aluminum, which is around 1,200. Gotcha. All right. Um, that's one of the big advantages of this rod is the 600 degree melting point, which is lower than a lot of other oh, products okay. out there. So. We're going to watch that flux, and when that flux turns from white or opaque to clear, mm -hmm. we know that we're approaching our temperature, and that's when we're going to apply the rod down to the tubing to actually make the repair. And when we're done, it should look very similar to one of these repairs gotcha. already in, already done in here. And you said it's just there's only a little bit of loss of efficiency by puncturing these fins here. It's correct. Not Total disaster. Now okay. this whole, when I'm done, this is actually going to look more like this yep. because these fins are actually melted away some gotcha. by the torch. Okay. Um, so today we're using a, an air acetylene torch with a size 5 tip in it. I find that's a really good size to use in fin packs because the fins dissipate the heat so well that you need a little bit more power than say if you're working on um, like a smaller, uh, just a line out in the air or something like that. Gotcha. Um, so. It's fired up. We're ready. Yeah, I'll let's point do this it. Away from you. Yeah, don't uh, okay. yeah, point that out far away from me. Oh, you know what? I gotta go turn my torch tank on right now. <laughs> go ahead and turn that Help, on. Helps and to these, turn. It helps to turn torch tanks on. And these glasses will uh, protect me, right? They'll. Sure. <laughs> that was not a confident answer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there we go. Hi -o. We got some heat. Look at that. Not recommended for a cigar, right? Uh, no, not, okay. not recommended for a cigar. There's the flame. Got a nice shot of that. That is whistling loud. That is whistling loud. Yes, sir, it is. Okay, so I can see the cool hole down. has been covered. Okay, so the hole's been covered. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use the uh, brush that comes in our kit. Okay, we're going to dip it in, a, in some water back here okay. a little bit, and we're just going to brush that off. All right. Is that a time-sensitive uh, action there to brush that off? Do you have to, like, no. quickly react? You don't need to quickly react. Okay. And actually, you probably want to wait just a little bit longer. Okay. Um, for the uh, for better strength on this to let everything cool out a little bit. The fins, like I said, dissipate this heat away quite well because right. we have all this aluminum, all these fins, they're designed to transfer heat so they do a really good job of cooling it down fairly gotcha. quickly. Okay. So we're just going to brush that, get that flux off of there, make, an ins make a uh, visual inspection on it, um, and everything looks pretty good yeah. in there. So let's, uh, let's put a... Uh, um, repair on this uh, U-bend down yes. here as well. Okay. Uh, and then we'll put a little bit of pressure to this whole thing and put some bubbles on it. We'll see if the whole thing actually same works. Same deal. Up. So we're going to use the same exact uh, method to try yep. to seal up this U-bend here? Same exact method to seal up that U-bend right over there. Okay. And um, we shall work on that. Let me get my glasses on. Get your glasses on. You ready for this? I'm ready. <laughs> okay. I don't know if the torch or the glasses are giving me a bigger headache right now. I see you applying that there. Kind of trying to line that up. Yep, get a little flux on that. There we go. Now it's cooking.
of that, and it's sealed. Now, it, do you got to also brush that off too? Yeah, you want to brush that off as well. Now that one I'm just going to let cool a hair bit longer here. You can see that the color kind of changed on the outside of it yeah. there, so it's cooling down quite a bit more. Because it's not in the fin pack, it takes a little bit longer to dissipate the heat off of that right. fitting right out there on a U-bend like that. Uh, now it is still going to be quite warm, uh, so we should hear just a slight yeah, hiss of the water really. right there, so you can tell it's, it's still a little bit warm. Mm -hmm. We're going to brush that off, clean that off to uh, get all the go. flux and everything off the outside of it. Mm -hmm. uh, that flux, if left on there, can be slightly corrosive to the aluminum, so you need to brush it's that good. and clean yeah. that well and uh, get it knocked off. Again, just use a little bit of water on the uh, stainless brush that's included with the kit. Now, who do you typically see when, when a contractor goes out to a house and you see this kind of damage to the coil? I mean, is this more designed for the seasoned vet to go out there, or can a, a newbie essentially learn how to do this pretty, pretty quick? Anyone that knows how to braise should be able to actually do this process. Uh, it's very similar to brazing or soft soldering. Okay. Um, and you can use almost any torch on this. You can use a propane torch, you can use a map gas torch, or you can use an air acetylene torch. Oxygen acetylene is probably going to be a little bit hot. You're going to need to be really careful with yeah. your temperature control to be able to use gotcha. that hot of a torch. So we got the two repairs done. All right. Um, shall now, we put? We got to test it, right? Yeah. Let's put some pressure on there and okay. test it. So okay. So what'd you bring to test it here? All right. So I'm going to walk around back. Walk around the back I, here. I got to sneak around back here. Okay. So we've got a tank of nitrogen. This is com you know compressed nitrogen like we use in the HVAC industry, and we've Ripped got it right out of Nick's car, so his turbo's not working anymore in his convertible. <laughs> That's sorry, Nick. Nitrogen, not nitrous. Oh, oh. Big okay. difference. Gotcha. Big gotcha. difference. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah. <laughs> Big difference. There. That's what we're here to do. We're here to learn. Okay, so turn our tank on. All right, so we've got about uh, 1500 psi in the tank. Okay. We're going to turn the regulator up and we're going to run this up to probably around four or 500 psi, about as high as this regulator will go. Okay. All right, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take some uh, leak detector bubbles here in our handy dandy little dauber. And we're going to put on over top of that repair, and we'll put some on over top of that repair, and we'll see how good of a job I actually did on these. Now, I know, correct me if I'm wrong, a great way, I when I try to find a gas leak, if something in my house, I thought there was a gas leak to put, like, soap over to see if it bubbles up. Is this kind of the same concept? It's kind of the same concept, but one of the problems with soap is it can have some chemicals on it, and if you leave residue on the pipes mm. with soap, yes. it can actually damage the pipes long term, so it's not recommended to actually use yeah. dish soap. Don't do it. that. Yeah. I did so. that once, so I won't do that again. So, anyways, let's crank this up, see how high we can go. Okay. What are you aiming for? Like, what's uh, what's the goal here with the pressure? With this pressure test, this coil is rated somewhere around 550 psi okay. uh, when it's new from the factory, um, and we're we're approaching that pretty quickly here. So we're okay. at about 550 right now. Um, so for it to happen that quickly, that means it's it's pretty sealed. Yeah, it's pretty sealed, and we're we're pushing a lot of pressure into this real quick. I'm going to walk back around there so that sure. I can see this a little bit better. Now, if it were still leaking, would you see bubbling right away? Correct. You would see bubbling because this entire coil is at 550 psi right gotcha. now. Gotcha. Okay. So, All right. That's yeah. a lot. So we're putting uh, putting some leak solution on there, and we're seeing zero bubbles. I'm not hearing anything leaking. So we're sealed up and ready to go right now. Awesome. Uh, if this if this coil was in someone's house, Very um, cool. this coil would be ready to put back into service and get them running rather than having to replace the whole thing. Now, you know, sometimes you might have to pull it out a little bit. Um, one thing you do want to do with this in the field, it's best practice to always flow the nitrogen through the uh, system as you're brazing, uh, just as you would in any other type of brazing. Gotcha. Uh, even though this is running at a lower temperature, uh, we don't want to risk forming any oxidization on the inside of the pipes that would get inside the system and gum it up. Um, and always with refrigeration systems, anytime you open it up to do a repair, you need to replace a filter dryer in that system as well uh, to make sure that the uh, system is kept uh, clean, dry, and uh, tight later on. Gotcha. Perfect. Do uh, you have any other piece of wisdom 
uh, for contractors that are either trying to learn how to do this for the first time or have done it and maybe they found something that they didn't know beforehand? Um, a little bit of practice is sometimes necessary. As with any new product, you yeah. want to, uh, to practice a little bit, find some aluminum coils or get a hold of an aluminum coil or even just some aluminum tubing you can buy and, and practice a little bit because anytime we learn a new technique, we just have to practice some. Absolutely. Well, great. Well, Eric, I appreciate you uh, coming on here to our field engineering episode. This was a lot of fun. Uh, I didn't get burnt. That's, uh, That's a good thing. I know. I owe Tyler 20 bucks. I thought I was going to get uh, singed today. But uh, no, if you have any questions on these products or want to talk to Eric, you can always call us first here at Jackson Systems at 888-652-9663. And always visit our website and you can submit questions to us at info at jacksonsystems.com. So again, thank you for watching this episode of Field Engineering. I'm J.D. Brake. This was Eric Kaiser. We'll see you next time.